Okay, welcome everybody. Give yourselves a great big hand. It's great to have you tonight. Awesome. It's no accident that you're here, and tonight for our Easter play, the title of it is One Decision Can Change Your Life. So how many are ready to be changed tonight, amen? Yeah. And we have a fantastic cast, hundreds of hours, uh, volunteers just poured their life into it, so tonight's going to be a real treat. Uh, just a couple of uh, housekeeping things. Uh, I want everyone to pull out your cell phones, if you have them, and cast them up front. No. <laughs> uh, it, Please turn them off, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, that way, it will be less distracting for you and the ones around you. And uh, secondly, the whole room is going to be a stage. You're going to have actors and actresses running through the aisle, so just be aware of that. Uh, so the whole room is a stage, so there's no bad seat tonight. Everyone's got a great seat, okay? Also, we have child care. Uh, there are some dramatic scenes, especially the crucifixion. So if you have a child that... Uh, maybe gets scared or, or just uh, nervous, or we have just come out to our welcome center, and we'll show you exactly uh, where to go, okay? Also, for you sitting up front here, we do have special effects. One of them is dry ice, so uh, just be aware of that, and uh, just know that. Okay, excellent, and uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Maybe uh, on the way in, you got a special booklet called uh, Love Beyond Knowledge. How many received one of those tonight? That's our gift to you. If you'd like one, come see us afterwards, and we're just blessed that you, that you came tonight. God bless you, and enjoy the show. Psalms and the law must be fulfilled, that Christ should suffer, be killed, and on the third day be raised to life, so that repentance and forgiveness of sins might be proclaimed to the whole world, to all nations. Master, is it time for you to raise up your kingdom? These things are not for you to know. The Father's will shall unfold it according to his purpose and design. Stay here in Jerusalem. Wait for the power that is coming. The Holy Spirit, I will send him. The Father and I will send him. Now 
go all of you, witness of me, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and even unto the ends of the earth. shall return. Now go and do as you have been told. for the upper room. Let's go. Come on. You know, I just had a great idea for you and me, John. Yeah. To cover more ground, uh-huh. let's split up. <laughs> you know, that's not a bad idea. Because, because we will. We'll cover more ground. It'll, let's do it. Let's do it. Maybe it was uh, near this. No, it wasn't here. It was maybe back... Peter, do you happen to remember where exactly we're going, by any chance? You know, I remember writing down the directions. You know, those directions that I gave to you. Yeah. Do you happen to have those directions, John? I mean... No, didn't think so. No. No, I don't. Maybe someone has a map. A ma- Maybe we could... Yes, we're just going to find someone in this place that has a map. You, no, please, go ahead and ask someone. Map, sir? <laughs> no. Hmm. I remember there was a brick wall. There was a fountain. It was right near that. It was right near a fountain and a brick wall. Hmm. Were, brick wall, fountain. How many of those have we seen on the road? Many, 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 many. A beggar. There was a beggar. I think. Oh, Peter. Peter, Peter. Hmm. Excuse me, do you have a... Never mind. <laughs> Did they have a map, Peter? Do you have maps? No. Peter, anything, just something to jog our memories. There was a, a fountain and a... a no, a John, pl- please, you're doing a great job. You keep it up. Well, I, I need some help. Wait, wait, wait. This, was, this is looking familiar. This is looking familiar. Right here. Yep. Yep. Brick wall. Okay. Hey, Peter. 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 This is it. Yes, 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 yes. There it is. This is it. I remember. Peter, look up. This is it. Come on. Friends, come. I found us a place, this upper room. Gather the others and send them up. Yes, yes, come on in, come on in, welcome. You may take a seat right there. Come on in, welcome. Make yourselves comfortable. Mary, not you. Uh, Can't you see we need more cushions? (sighs) Come on in, welcome, welcome. (sighs) Yes, well, not there, Mary. You're blocking the door over there. (sighs) Come on in, welcome. Great to see you. You may take a seat right here. Ah, sir, yes. Come on. You can have a seat right over here by the window where the breeze is most pleasant. For you, Nicodemus. Last time I checked, my sister's name is not Nicodemus. Ah, Take a seat. Ah, Welcome, welcome. Oh, Peter, come here. Stop sulking. How about how about you help us out by getting us some water? 
Go on. Oh, thank you. Chin up, man. His followers need you now. Speaking of followers, where is John? 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 Where? Oh, John! Oh, light! We yes. need light! I can barely see a thing in here. Remember, we're all just gathered here for Pentecost, just like all the other pilgrims who've come here for the celebration. Ah, yes. Just every known associate of Jesus of Nazareth just so happens to be tucked away in the same upper room Martha, for Pentecost. I've got the water. <sighs> Where do you want it? Not there. What do you think we are, camels? Over here, Peter. And Martha, I mean Mary, my sister. Yes. <sighs> I've been doing so much, I just had to say my own name. We need cups. Ah, mm. How many should I get, Martha? Common sense, sister. Look around. Where did... I just saw John. Come where on, did Peter. he go? John, where is that Woman, man? Woman, I'm right here, and I've been here the whole time. Ah, yes. Right you are. Well? Well, what? What now? Well, we are to wait. He told us that his power would come. Yes, Thomas, I am well aware of that. So is everyone else here. Otherwise, we would not be here. So, Martha, I'm curious. What is it that you want to know? Well, about how long do you all think we're going to be here? With some hummus and pita do? Maybe with some fakes to hold us over? For what? Well, are we going to be here for dinner? Because if so, I must get started immediately. Of course, we'll need fresh barley loaves for Pentecost. And perhaps some lamb. Mm -mm. There are way too many people here for lamb, and that would be much too expensive. We have to go with chicken. Uh, Mary, would yes. chicken be more expensive in the temple marketplace or the marketplace down the road? The temple market is cheapest, but fish would be even cheaper. Oh, would know of course that. you would know that, Philip. Perhaps a nice soup would do. Martha, Martha, does it always have to be about the details? <laughs> do you want to be stuck in this room with all these people once they get hungry and cranky and tired? Do you think we'll just be able to go without eating for hours, days, and weeks? Or do you think we will be miraculously sustained? If anybody knows about miracles, it's this lot. And you know that I am certainly not the one who performed them. So I am going to need a little time and information if you do not want to deal with a hungry, cranky, tired crowd. But how many do you think we need to feed? Common sense, dear sister. Look around. You're right. You know, John, I wouldn't be so hard on Martha. You do want to eat, don't you? Is it not Pentecost? Are we not Jews? How suspicious would it be if we were the only Jews not feasting during a feast? Yes, fine. You might as well start some dinner for us all. I know the second coming would be... I know Jesus said the second coming would be soon, but I doubt it would happen before supper time. Hmm. You know, John, can I talk to you, actually? You know, I just don't feel... I don't feel right about this. I don't feel easy. He said the troubles would come. Persecutions, even. He, he said it would happen. He, he also said to wait, that he'd send one to comfort us. Well, she's Martha, Martha, what are you doing now? We need some light and fresh air. Well, is this wise? Do we want to be seen like this? A merry band of Jesus followers all together in one room? We're ripe for the taking. Well, would you rather be in stale air just to die of suffocation? It's a celebration. Think about it. It would draw more suspicion if we were a group this size, tucked away in a dark room. So relax, Thomas. Wow. I can barely believe those words just came out of my mouth. But really, relax. Truly, the Savior has done a mighty work in you, dear Martha. Servant of us all. Oh, well, that is true. And Jesus loves me for who I am. Besides, there are no miracles being done with me serving these people. I can serve these people in my sleep. It's the patience to do so that is truly a miracle. Do you remember the miracle of how he fed the 5,000 of us? With the five loaves and the two fish. I thought he was crazy. Jesus, I said, what could he do for such a crowd? It was because so many people were coming and going that we did not get a chance to eat. 
So Jesus said to us, So we went away alone in a boat to a solitary place. Many who saw from all the towns got there ahead of us. Look, there he is. It's Jesus of Nazareth. I told you he would be here. Wait, I was the one who was sure. You wanted to go get something to eat. Yeah, go grab some food and come back. All right, nothing. When Jesus landed, he saw a large crowd and had compassion on them. Why? Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach many things. And by this time, it was late in the day. So we, we came to him. Master, this is a remote place and it's already very late. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. Philip, you give them something to eat. That would take more than a half a year wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How much food do we have? Go and see. We have this small boy's lunch. Five loaves of bread and just two fish. Yeah. Thank you. Have the people sit down in groups of 50 over there on the green grass. Father. We thank you. Bless it to us. Let us taste and see that the Lord is good. Have you tasted this? This stuff is amazing. If Jesus was king, we could eat like this all the time. And do you see how much is left over? Baskets and baskets full. Sit back and relax and rule the world. You never have to go hungry or work ever again. Exactly. Jesus for king. Jesus for king. Jesus for king. Jesus for king. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. I am the bread come down from heaven. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, they will live forever. Peter, Andrew, John, come with me. Who do the crowds say that I am? Some say John the Baptist. I've heard others say Elijah. And others, that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. What about you? Who do you say that I am? Jesus. We know you to be the Christ. Do not tell this to anyone. The Son of Man must suffer many things. He must be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law. He must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Whoever wants to be my disciple, they must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in the glory of the Father and of his holy angels. What good is it for any one man to gain the whole world, yet in the end they would lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is willing to lose their life for my sake, they will surely save it. But whoever wants to save their life, they will surely lose it. But I tell you, There are some who are standing here today. They who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. When they all had enough to eat, he said to us, Gather everything, let nothing be wasted. So that's what we did. We gathered the twelve baskets with the five barley loaves and two fish left over by those who had eaten. When the people saw this miracle Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. So how could we have left him then? He gave us the words of eternal life. I mean, we knew him to be the Christ, son of the living God. (laughs) Not all of us could easily believe. I couldn't even believe myself until he asked me to touch his hands, his feet, even his side. John, can I steal you for a minute? What now? Faster, faster, faster. You need to do something about Peter. About Peter? 
Peter's fine. Peter is not fine. Peter should be making jokes. Peter should be laughing at my jokes. Well, maybe you're not as clever as you think. Well, that's not true. But maybe you don't want to confront your friend. Confront him about what? You know Peter has been riddled with guilt ever since that night. We cannot let him go on like this. Do you know he went back to his boat? This man had more faith than all of us combined. He'd seen all of Jesus' miracles. He'd listened to every sermon. I mean, this man had so much faith, he walked on water. Well, maybe he needs to be reminded of that great faith. How am I supposed to remind him? Excuse me, Peter, we need your help. Come on, come on. We are having trouble remembering that time when you know, there was a storm and Jesus walked out to you on the water. <sighs> Subtle. Right, wasn't that right after Jesus fed the 5,000? Oh, I love this story. I'm sure not everyone here has heard it. Yeah. Please, yeah. tell yeah. us. Story. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Everyone hush now. Peter has a story to tell, and you are going to want to hear it. Martha, I... Just start from the beginning, dear. Go on. Come on, Peter. Jesus walked on water, and then I walked on water. The end. Oh, no. No. Peter, tell us the whole story yeah, from the beginning. Yeah. Well, Jesus had his disciples get into the now. boat and go on ahead of him as he dismissed the crowd. After we got onto the boat, he dismissed the crowd and he went away by himself into a, onto a mountainside. Not that that was so unusual for him. But he was there all night. By the time that morning was coming, our boat was already a considerable distance from the land. And we were in a mighty storm. The wind was pushing us farther and farther each minute. Nevertheless, he did come out to us shortly before dawn, walking on the lake. When we saw him, we were terrified. It's, it's a ghost. Take courage, my friends, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Peter. Peter, no. Come. Truly, you are the Son of God. After we crossed over, we landed at Gennesaret. And when the people of that place recognized Jesus for who he was, they sent word into all the surrounding country. Hmm. Just a second. People from all over brought their sick to Jesus, begging Jesus just to let their sick touch the hem of his cloak. And all who did, they were healed. It took much faith to step out onto the water. Yes, I believed. And I also sank. Jesus had to save me in my unbelief or else I would have drowned. Jesus had to save us all from our unbelief. Yes. It's not the same. I had heard of his teachings his miracles, but I had to speak to him. I had to come to him in the dark. Yes, you, Nicodemus. My, what courage it must have taken to sneak away from your Sanhedrin in the dark of night to speak with the rabbi. Thomas, do not forget so quickly how willing the rabbi was to do whatever was needed for just one to believe. John, Thomas is right. Perhaps I had been occupied all day by my own teaching duties. Perhaps the rabbi was surrounded by day, night offered a quiet time for prolonged conversation. Or perhaps I am a coward, who in the end could do nothing to spare him from the cross. No one who spoke of him was safe from Caiaphas and his gang. The priests were getting regular reports of his activities. Being a Pharisee myself would not have protected me. 
There had been no direct voice from God in Israel for a long time, and here was one whose message carried the stamp of divine authority. So I, the cautious inquirer, but a man of spiritual perception, sought out Christ and listened to one of his remarkable conversational sermons. When you pray, follow this pattern. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but Lord, deliver us from all evil. Jesus of Nazareth, a minute of your time, please. Yes. Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Surely they cannot enter their mother's womb a second time to be born. I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit will give birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, you feel its presence, but you do not know where it is coming from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus, you are Israel's teacher and you do not know these things. No. I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we see, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak to you of heavenly things? Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so too must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him, they will have eternal life. Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he sent his Son, his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him, they will not perish, they will have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it. No. But that through his son, the whole world could be saved. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people, they have loved the darkness because their deeds were evil. They will not step out into the light for fear that their evil deeds will be exposed. But those who love truth, they will gladly, gladly step into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done, they have done in the sight of God. I, a master in Israel and a member of the Sanhedrin, confessed Christ to be a teacher sent from God. I heard him, despite my culture, position, and religion. I needed to be born anew by the Spirit of God. I came to realize that my salvation was dependent upon the shedding of innocent blood. Yet, at that time, I didn't realize that the blood shed for me would be his. Where is he now? What is he doing? I scarcely understood him then, and I'm not sure I understand now. He told us he would return to the Father and would send us another, the Spirit, the Comforter. The bread came freshly out of the oven and the meat is roasting. So go ahead and help yourselves. Fish should hold us over until now. There you are. There you are. There you are. Okay, everybody's taken care of. Oh, John! John! What should we be doing? Doing? Yes, doing. We... we wait. Wait? We wait for the wind. His spirit will fill us and will carry us forth into all truth. Oh. This he told us. Yes, sister, we must wait. He can't talk to us right now, but we can tell us the things he did. Um, I'm sure it would do us all good to, to talk about these stories more. Come, sit. Let's talk about these things. All of these stories. 
Jesus never condemned anyone, not even me. He saved me, literally. If he had not, I would surely be in hell. It is all forgiven and forgotten. You do not have to share your past. I know, but with these past weeks, how could I not? No, it's all right, Mary. Jesus took away my shame. I want to share my story. Okay. Those viper scribes and Pharisees, those hypocrites, they set me up with one of their own. I was desperate, and I needed the money. I sold myself into their plan, and they bought me. Then they burst into the bedroom and dragged me away, leaving him there laughing on the floor. It was all a trick. They were trying to spring a trap for Jesus and leave me dead in the process. But Jesus wouldn't let them. He saved me. And then he set me free. Jesus had returned to the Mount of Olives. But early the next day, he was back at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat and taught them. But as he was speaking, the leaders of religious law and the Pharisees brought me, a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery, and threw me before him. Teacher? No, no, no. This woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses said such women should be stoned. What do you say? Do you believe the law of Moses or not? You said you were here to fulfill the law. All of it. Every jot, every tittle, you said. Well, here's your chance, Rabbi Jesus. We got her dead to right. We brought her straight from the bed. Follow the law. Show us you believe what Moses gave to us. Order her stone! Let him among you who is without sin be the very first to cast the stone at her. Just us now, is it? Where are your accusers? Where are they who condemn you? There is no one, Lord. Neither do I condemn you. But honor this now, will you please? Go. Sin like this no more. They were trying to trick Jesus into saying something they could use against him. But they couldn't. Jesus just stooped down in the dust and wrote with his finger... They kept demanding an answer. I was terrified. But Jesus, the only one who was blameless, refused to condemn me. Each one of us should have been condemned. We know that all of us here have sinned. We couldn't have cast a stone at you either. We must remember what the rabbi taught us when he said, If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not condemn that person. For I did not come to condemn the world but to save the world. Have not we all been condemned by the law? The law came so that trespass would increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. It's a centurion. What would they want with us? It's been over 50 days since Jesus came out of the ground. Yes, who is it? Mary. We are travelers. You're from Capernaum. We're here for Pentecost. Yes, what do you want? Please, are you the followers that were with Jesus? How do we know? Do not fear. Them. Please, we, we wish to be with you. It's a centurion. Surely no Israelites out there. You know, that guy looks familiar. I say we let them in. What? I mean... <laughs> The master did say his house would be one of prayer for all nations. Plus, how can we forget what he did with the woman at the well, and the woman at Sakaar, and the Samaritans of that city? Yes, but the master's not You all keep right talking. Now. We are going to let them in. Yes, welcome. Thank you. Come on Come in. Come on in. 
You must be starving coming all the way from Capernaum. Come on in and I'll fix you something to eat. You are welcome here, Lucius. You've always been a friend of God's people. And I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for you sending word to Jesus about my sickness. So you're the one. Yes, yes. I was as good as dead. It was strange. I was going about my day as usual, and uh, as the day went on, I began to feel uneasy and fatigued. I thought that it would be something that would pass quickly, but um, as weeks went by, it was clear I was not going to get better. <coughs> I tried to continue to work for my master, but I just couldn't find the strength to do anything. So I went to lie down, just to try and catch my breath. <laughs> Jacob is so, so sick. It breaks my heart. We must ask this Jesus for help. What else can we do? He knows God. I have heard his message. And he walks like a man in control. Go. and they go and do as they're told. Just say the word. Where is this brand of faith among the children of Israel? Lucius, your servant is well. Go. Go and see. Jacob! You are well! He did it! It was amazing, Lucius. It was like coming out of a fog. I sensed the touch of God upon me. And I was all new. I was sure I was going to die. But Jesus healed me and saved me. The authority of God in Jesus. It is real, I tell you. It is more real than the authority of... More real than the authority of Caesar. <laughs> God would do so much for Capernaum. The Lord loved that place. We always used to dock our boats there. We came to Jerusalem for Pentecost. We were hoping to find Jesus' followers there. He is the only way. He showed us love when no one else would. Let me tell you my story. I remember how desperate I was. My daughter had just been born. The time of purification had ended. But I just kept bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. It wouldn't stop. I couldn't go anywhere. Unclean rules made me just like a leper. My husband couldn't come near me anymore. No doctor could solve the riddle. After 12 years and hundreds of attempts at healing, I was at the end of my rope. And then I heard Jesus was coming to town. I quickly grabbed my husband's coat. I threw it on and I snuck out into the town and people were pushing and shoving and I reached for him. <coughs> and I remember thinking this, if this is the true Messiah, then just a touch of his garment could heal me. It was my only hope. And there he was. I pushed through the crowd, and just as I was about to reach for him, another crowd came through. Make way. Rabbi! Make way for oh, Rabbi! Please, this is my daughter. I'm the only child. She's sick and dying. If you would come. Yes. 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 Please. Yes. Thank you. Please tell them we're on our way. 
Stop. Something just happened. Someone just touched me. Master, the people are thronging around you. This was different. Power was taken from me. Virtue was claimed. Who was it? It was you, wasn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Lord, I have been bleeding for 12 years, and I believe that touching the end of your garment would heal me. And I am well. I am well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, first, please. Your daughter, she has died. Oh. Oh, hope is lost. No, Jairus, no. You must believe. This is not the end of your story. The girl is not dead. She's merely asleep. Asleep? Asleep, you say. And I suppose you're going to wake her up? Face the facts, Jairus. We're getting the burial clothes ready. She's dead. <laughs> Asleep, you say? <laughs> Everyone, away from her. <laughs> Jairus, you must believe. Little girl, I say to you, arise. Abba, Jairus. what's going on? Who are these people and, and who is this man? I... I was on a journey, and it was beautiful. It was like a long, long dream, and then I heard a voice, and I had to get up. Rebecca, my little Rebecca, you, you were sick, and you died, and he called you, and you came back, you brought my daughter back, Lord. Thank yes, you. Jairus. Thank you. Yes. Please keep quiet about this for now. Of course. There is so much to do in the will of my father. Yes, Lord. But now give her something to eat. Of course. She has been to places few others have been. I'll never forget that day. It was amazing. And then Abba had to go and tell everyone how Jesus brought me back to life. I know, I know. He told me not to. But it was a miracle. You were dead. She was dead. But now, my daughter, she's alive. She's alive! <laughs> Lazarus! Rebecca, I also felt like I was in a dream. It felt like an eternity. But my sisters tell me it was only four days. Then I heard this familiar voice calling my name. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Lazarus, you cannot start from the end. You have to start from the beginning. All right, guys. Then you tell the story. I wasn't there for it anyways. <laughs> None of us understood his timing. Lazarus clearly does not understand timing at all. But I can tell you that the Lord's timing is perfect. Now, dear sister, you can say that now, but don't forget. His timing was not always seemingly perfect as we were experiencing it. No, I will never forget that, Martha. Could you? Never. The odd thing was, I thought I had faith at the time. We had hosted Jesus, fed him and his disciples many times. He was our friend. He is our friend. Yes, always. And even though he didn't act in the way I thought he should, his way was perfect. Our brother Lazarus was so sick, and I had seen the sickness before, and I knew what was coming if the Lord himself did not intervene. We couldn't just leave him there, so we sent word to Jesus. We said, Lord, the one you love is sick. We'd seen him heal the sick so many times. Of course he could heal our brother. Yes. Jerusalem was only two miles from Bethany. He could be in our home in hours to save our brother. I certainly thought so, but his ways are mysterious. He got our message, and later his disciples told me his reply was, This sickness will not end in death. No, 
It is for God's glory so that his son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Lazarus. He loved me. He loved you too, Martha. Yes, I know that, Mary. But what I struggled with is when Jesus heard our brother was sick, he waited another two days before coming. Come, let us go back to Judea. Lord, the Jews there sought to stone you, and yet you still want to go back? Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks by this world's light will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. L Lord, if he sleeps, surely he will get better. Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, Thomas, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. Come, let us go to him. Let us go, that we may die with him. By the time Jesus had arrived, our brother had been in the tomb for four days. Four days, less than two miles from Jerusalem. And he comes four days after our brother had died. Many Jews had made that two-mile journey to offer us comfort, but you were inconsolable. Of course I was. Why should our brother have died when his beloved friend was God himself in the flesh, capable of healing the sick? When we heard he was coming, I couldn't even go out to meet him. I could, and I did. I had faith like the others. Like Lucius, that woman with the issue of blood touched his clothes and she was healed. He had raised that little girl from the dead. I had faith, so why hadn't it been enough? I knew Jesus could have saved our brother, and I wanted to know why he hadn't. Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. But even now I know, whatever you ask of God, he will surely give you. And I know my brother will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me, though they die, they will surely live. Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. Good. Now where is Mary? Mary, Mary, the teacher is here and he is calling for you. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Where? Where have you laid him? Come and see. He loved him. Could not this one who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Take away the stone. Lord, there will be an odor, for he has been dead for days. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? <laughs> Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I say this on account of everybody standing here today, that they may believe that you have sent me. Lazarus, come out! Unbind him and let him go. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Let's go tell everyone, Lazarus is alive.
I had waited until after our brother had died, many of the Jews who came to mourn ended up believing in Jesus. His timing is always perfect. He's been faithful to us back then. He will be faithful to us now. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and Pharisees called the meeting of the Sanhedrin I regret not being at the meeting. I know now that it would not have made a difference, but I wish I could have at least been there to defend the rabbi. That's when they decided he must die, wasn't it? Yes, yes it was. That's when we no longer moved about publicly among the people of Judea. Instead, we withdrew to a region near the wilderness where he stayed with us disciples. I still don't understand why we couldn't have just stayed with him. We knew that they were out to get him. I was the one that always said that we should fight to defend him. Peter, let's not get worked up about this now. You and I both know that all happened the way it had to happen. Then why do I feel so unworthy now? I was sleeping when I should have been praying. In my ungodly rage, I cut off the ear of Malchus. Hey, cheer up. You work fine now. <laughs> and I have a great story to tell everyone, right? Look, ouch. I stood by the fire. And I denied I knew his name. I even called down a curse on myself that night. I, I just wish I had played the man a little better. To think I even went back to my boat. But you didn't stay there. You're here with us now and we wait for his power. You don't get it, John. 
I swore my allegiance to him. I walked on water. I witnessed all of these miracles we've been talking about tonight. And what was the result? Jesus, who knew everything that was going to happen, told me that I would deny him. And yet still, how could I have done it? I could sense the evil that was going to happen that night. I, I didn't know what, but I knew enough to stay close. I just wanted to protect him. But I was too weak. James, John, watch with me. Pray with me. Pray with me. Father, is this the way I am to go, Father? This cup, Father, must I drink from this? The weight, Father, it's stifling. How do I carry this, Father? Could none of you stay awake with me at this time? Get up. Get up. Your spirits are willing. Don't give it to your flesh. Watch with me. Pray with me. Pray with me. Father. Abba, Father. Must be finished. Oh, yes, Father. Let your will be done. Let your will be done, Father. I take the cup. I take the cup. Not my will, Father. Let your will be done. Enough sleep. Get up! Get up! Get up! The dark hour is here. Is this how you give me up? With a kiss? Who are you looking for? Nazarene, the one called Jesus. I am. Who is it that you seek again? I'm looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Where is he? I said it before. I am the one. What use have you for these others? Let them go free. No, stop, stop, stop. This fight is not for now. Legions of angels stand ready, but this is not their hour. This cup is from the Father. Shall I avoid drinking it? No. His will be done. His will be done. He fixed it. He healed me. He fixed my ear. What is this? Swords, torches, and clubs? I was at the temple every day. Why did you not seize me there? That was your hour, however. Do what you were sent to do. I am in your hands now. For him and then I failed to defend him the soldiers took him away for trial and what a sham that was the crowd was screaming for them to crucify him before the trial even begun but what did I do this man of great faith did I witness for his defense no did I at least try to get them to trade Jesus for Barabbas? 
No. No, I cowered in the darkness, hoping to go unnoticed. And I couldn't even do that. You were with Jesus of Nazareth. Woman, I was not. No, you were among them with the disciples. <laughs> did, did you not just hear me? No, I wasn't. Of course you were there. You also are a Galilean. You people are crazy. I never even knew the man. <laughs> Said this would happen. Before the rooster grows, you'll deny my name. Oh, Peter, we were running for our lives that night. Any one of us could have denied him. We didn't know what we were doing. Yes, we did not know what we were doing. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus said this from the cross. Forgive, Peter. Forgive yourself. The cross is our sign. He was slain for us. We behold the Lamb of God. He was lifted up to draw all men to him. We must not forget these words he's told us. They are precious Precious words for us. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Today you will be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders made their plans on how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that he was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have said, I have shed innocent blood. What is that to us? That's your responsibility. Judas threw the money in the temple, left, and went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, This is blood money. We can't put this back in the temple. It's against the law. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you have said so. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, Jesus gave no response. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now, it was the governor's custom at the festival to release to the crowd a prisoner chosen by the people. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, whom shall I release to you? Barabbas? Or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. What shall I do then with this Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. But they all answered, Crucify him! Why? What crime has he committed? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but instead an uproar was starting, he took water and he washed his hands in front of the crowd. And he said, I, I, I'm innocent of this man's blood. It's your responsibility. Then all the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas, but he had Jesus flogged and sent him away to be executed. Then the soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him. They put a scarlet robe on him. And they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. 
Hail, King of the Jews! They spit on him. They took the staff and they beat him again and again on the head. Again. When they had finished mocking him, they took off the robe and put Jesus' clothes on him. Then they led him away to be crucified. of Israel, come down from that cross. They will believe you. He trusted in God. Let him deliver you now if he'll have you. (laughs) He said he was the chosen one, the son of God. (laughs) Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. If you are the Christ, save us!
Today, you will be with me in paradise. Paradise? Can one like me be forgiven? Woman, woman, behold. Behold your son. Son, behold your mother. bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came into the holy city after Jesus' resurrection and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Truly, this was the Son of God.
Naked and alone on the cross. Why did they make you carry the cross? Jesus wasn't moving fast enough for them, I guess. Besides, Jesus is innocent. That cross belonged to me more than it did to him. Simon, what do you mean? He never sinned, but we sinned. We're all sinners. But because of his death, because of his sacrifice, we're forgiven. He did what he had to do. We know not what we do, Peter. Not one of us. I looked up at him. I, I held his mother. There was nothing more I wanted to do than to take him down from that cross and nurse him back to life. But that was not his plan. His plan is perfect. All happened as it had to have happened. A perfect sacrifice had to be made so we could be born again. Jesus willingly took our sins upon himself so that God could look on us with no condemnation. No one here can condemn you when God has forgiven you. Jesus told you you would deny him. He knew every sin before you committed it. He still died for you. Peter, he has done it all. There is nothing left to feel guilty for. He willingly took the wages of our sins upon himself. It is finished. He proclaimed forgiveness as he died. He declared it. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. I was so focused on all that I had failed to do. I forgot to focus on what he had successfully done. He took my sin and my shame. He took it upon himself. And he paid the price. But now I... I have no sin left to feel guilty over anymore. <laughs> Don't you say a thing, Martha. Did I say anything? That was a kind thing you did for Peter. You were right. Yes, call it a woman's intuition, but you... I can admit that you were right. <laughs> Even the man who walked on water needed to be reminded of what having faith really means. Well, one simply just has to have an eye for detail. That's all. John, how much longer until you think something happens here? God alone knows. I mean, we've had to wait like this before. Remember that long Sabbath after the cross? <sighs> Did any of us sleep? Of all the days to honor the Sabbath, the Lord chose that one. He rested that day. The Lord himself waited three days in that tomb. 
Surely he wouldn't make us wait longer than that. Well, you're the one with all the insight on his perfect timing. <laughs> now, just because his timing is perfect does not mean it's easy to wait. I thought it was forever to wait for Jesus to come to Lazarus, but that felt like nothing in comparison for waiting for Jesus to rise on the third day. I can still see his eyes on that morning. I was weeping, and there he was, but he was all new, alive, not bloody and battered like he was when Nicodemus wrapped him. Then he said my name. Mary. Yes, you told us, Mary, and we ran to see for ourselves. And then he came into this very room. Peace be with you, he said. And he asked for something to eat.
not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Let us break bread like he told us to. Peter, do you remember how Jesus sent us to make preparations for the Passover? I do. Uh -huh. So you two can be useful. The Lord is truly gracious. You're not the only one with the power to arrange a meal, Martha. We found exactly how we left it, and we just did it ourselves. Jesus gave thanks. And then he said, Take and divide this among you, for I tell you I will not drink of the fruit of this vine until the kingdom of God comes. He broke the bread and gave it to us, saying, Take and divide this among you. This bread is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup, it's the blood of the new covenant, which I have poured out for you. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, as you asked us to, we now pray in your name. Lord, you have taken your place on high, and we celebrate that here today. We ask that you would now give us your power as you promised us you would. Send us your power, Lord. Sounds like a gang of drunken fools. No, wait, they speak of the love of God and his salvation. I'm hearing it in my own language. Salvation words? God of love? Who is this God they speak of? Men of Judea 
and all who dwell in Jerusalem, give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you might suppose, seeing that it's only the ninth hour of the day. No. This is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, declares the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your older men will dream dreams. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus Christ God raised up. And of that we are all now witnesses. Therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, it is he who is now pouring out what you are seeing and hearing for yourselves. Turn to him. Believe and be saved in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you too can receive this promise of the Holy Spirit. For this promise, it's for you, and it's for your children, and it's for all who are afar off, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Come, all of you, all of you who are weary and weighed down, come receive me. Wow, they did an amazing job, didn't they? Wow, let's give them. Yeah, that was so good. That was so good. You know, I love plays like this because they challenge us. Like we can consider a play and then we can go in our cards and say, wow, they were great actors. Like the lighting was great. You know, it was like well put together. It was like Broadway, right? <laughs> And we can look at these things and we can just go in our cars and, and then that can, out, that can die there. Like that thought of the play can just die there. Or we can be personally challenged. Personally challenged in our faith. Personally challenged in our walk with God. Personally challenged that God is calling us and saying, come unto me. Are you who are weak and burdened? Are you who are depressed? Are you who have issues? Like he's saying, come to me and learn of me and he will give you rest. And he gives you that invitation and he gives it to you freely. And so if you've been convicted by this play and if you feel like I've been living in sin, I've been dealing with guilt, I've been dealing with shame and I've been walking around with this burden that's been difficult for me to bear, Christ wants to relieve the burden he wants to relieve the pain. He wants to give you rest. He wants to give you peace. And he wants to give you an eternal relationship with him. And today, he's challenging you. He said this in John chapter 14, verse 6. He said, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the, to the Father except through me. And you can say in your heart, with all heads bowed and eyes closed, you can say in your heart, Dear Lord, I'm a sinner, but you love me. And you came and died for me personally. Come into my heart and make me a new creation. And help me to know that you would never leave me nor forsake me. And if we could turn the lights on with all your heads bowed and eyes closed. If you said that prayer, if you can raise your hand. If you said that prayer, you can raise your hand. Okay, we have a couple raised hands. And if we have our ushers come up and just keep your hands raised. And we have counselors that are going to come and, and they're going to give you a gift in the Bible. Give you a gift in the Bible. And actually, you can come up. 
You can come up. If you raise your hand, you can just come up. God is challenging us. He's just like, come. Come. He said, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. Amen. Praise God. Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. Jesus came and died for you today. He bore your sins. It's a free gift. But it cost the perfect spotless son of God his life. Come today. There's more here. Maybe you're procrastinating or maybe you don't want people to see you. But make a faith decision. Go towards God. He cares for you. He loves you. He's the burden bearer. He has a great plan for your life. Today's the day of salvation. Praise God. All right, we had a great time, didn't we? God ministered to us. Praise God. Wow. This was a great time. Great time. Huh? A song? All right. All right. God bless you. We have some songs for you. All right. A song.